going on, you guys? Much for Fan TV coming to you live from Rebel Arena in Harrison, New Jersey. We are here with Tom Bellows making uh, his glorious return to the channel. But Tom, it's been a while. There have been a number of good wins in between, and today that all fell apart. Been at kind of Hindenburg levels of first half. It's a huge vanity. <laughs> How do you even begin to describe what went on in that first half, Tom? I feel like Chris had an idea that we were going to try out a new lineup because he saw the 1-1 dogfight in Columbus. You don't try out a new lineup like that with new with players who are technically your B team. And it showed. Everyone was out of place. Colleen looked lost. Um, Etienne tried, but once again, he's not a focal point. I felt like there was zero creativity. Big game, big stupid game for a lot of the players like Sean Davis and Derek and Colleen to a certain extent. I had no idea why Connor was there. Maria was there, he did great. But first half was an absolute torpedo to the season. Probably the worst half we played in this decade. Wow. This decade, huh? Potentially. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I mean, I didn't really, I'm not really sure about this decade, but certainly the worst half that we played this year. This year, for sure. I think uh, a lot of it on the fans' minds will be on the performance of one Aurelian Collin at this point. And why it is that a man named Fidel just seems to be stuck in the bench behind him. Like, what do you think is going on here? What do you think need, Fidel needs to do to get some time in the first team? What is going on? Like, do you have any the, the only ex explanation, explanation for me is that the, the coaching staff beyond Jesse Marsh <laughs> must have a problem with it. And it's not because when Jesse was playing, like, oh, he likes Colleen, that's his boy. It can't be that anymore. We've seen every game this year, and you can't say we have center back depth. Obviously, New York Red Bull 2 having a game tight hurt us. We couldn't take Haas or something. So we were stuck with Colleen and Fidel. We went with Colleen. There's no reasonable explanation that I see anymore. Why well, see him trying? MLS has moved past him. He did great. He's a great locker room guy. He's got a purpose in this club. His purpose isn't on the pitch, I don't feel anymore. It just it hurts to say because he's given a lot. But just the past two years, the decline has been after his injury, like bang to absolute zero. Tonight was absolute zero. I, if Fidel doesn't play, get, doesn't get minutes anymore, like, I know he's on loan, I know we don't technically own him like we own Marito, so it might be, maybe it's an aging club thing, who knows, it's, it's telling if he doesn't get minutes after this. I think switching gears to the second half, I mean, uh, once Kaku and Bradley came on, uh, the team that we watched all season came back. Yes. And it was kind of a bit too late by them, they had a lot of chances to tie the game up, I thought. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of a testament to say that we don't need to be pulling silly experiments like this, right? We have something that works. Yeah. And it, obviously, if you can't rotate players in this league on this schedule, how we play, that's rough. If we're a two-man te two team with Bradley and Kaku, that's a problem. If our, This is a prove-it game. These players have to step up. And if Armas can't trust these guys to be rotated, we have to throw Bradley and Kaku out. If we can't risk resting, resting them and go behind at home, if this was away, whatever. If we go at home, behind at home, three nothing, resting our two players, like you need to. I don't think. I think Tim played all 90 minutes for each game. Like we can't. That's not a sustainable model as we go forward. So I'm worried and concerned about that going forward. Because if we can't do that, we're going to hit a wall, and we're going to hit a wall that we came close to overcoming today. We played, but we played the first team in the second half, and. On limited rest, that's not healthy for the players to keep asking them every every week. I guess they're switching gears to the LAFC game next Sunday. Uh, they have a lot of firepower, but they also look a bit susceptible to back. Uh, this could be kind of a 50-50 game for us, isn't it? Like, uh, how do you feel uh, the initial position of Chivas 2.0 is going to go down? Uh, Chivas 2.0, um, Bob Bradley revenge game or something. Like, it's we should if we play at full strength, we should be able to put some past them. Will we be able to? Because they do have a decent attack, but as we've seen in every big game they're in, they get real, they get going, and then they get comfortable and they collapse. Their back four, especially the back two, their center back pairing, has had a lot of issues keeping it going for 90 minutes. One thing we don't have, Aaron Long and Tim Parker always going to keep it together 90 minutes. That's our best advantage going against LAFC. It depends which squad goes out there, and hopefully this they take this as a a real kick that we gotta come out and crush them, but 
I have favorable things for us going forward for LAFC. I think we can win that one. Fuck you, Chivas 2.0, Metro Ben TV, signing up.